Hi, I'm Tilly from the sewing company Tilly and the Buttons and I'm going to be showing you how to make your own pyjama bottoms. I'm going to use our Jamie sewing pattern, which you can sew as either full length pyjamas or flirty boyfriend shorts. They've got an elasticated waist and an optional drawstring tie. If you're new to sewing, this is a perfect project to start with as it's really simple to make and there's no fiddly bits. Or if you're more experienced, you can whip these up in no time and they make a great gift for family or friends. This is also a great project if you're trying to introduce teens and tweens to sewing because it's really simple to sew, plus we've included an extra small size especially for them. You're going to need your pyjama sewing pattern, some fabric, pick a light to medium weight woven fabric such as cotton lawn, shirting, flannel, double gauze, even viscose are all great options and the pattern will tell you how much you need for your size, some matching thread, 25mm or 1 inch wide elastic. If you can't get any, don't worry though, you can make the drawstring instead. Two large safety pins, a sewing machine and basic tools, and if you're adding the drawstring, you'll also need a small scrap of iron-on interfacing and a buttonhole foot for your sewing machine. So let's get started. Pre-wash your fabric to get any shrinkage out of the way and give it a good press. The pattern booklet will show you how to lay out the fabric and the pattern depending on your pattern size and the width of your fabric. With the Jamie pyjamas, in most cases you're going to be folding the fabric lengthways, bringing together the finished edges or the selvages with the right sides or the nice sides on the inside. But if your fabric is narrow, you may need to lay it out flat and cut each piece twice. Now find your pattern size in the pattern booklet and cut out the pieces along your size lines and you can choose between the shorts or the pyjama bottom hem lines for the Jamie pyjamas and the drawstring is optional. Lay the pattern pieces out on your fabric following the cutting layout diagrams and you're going to want to line up the grain line arrows so they're running exactly parallel to the fold or the finished edges and you can do this by putting a pin in one end of the arrow, measuring the distance to the edge then you pivot the pattern so the other end of the arrow is the same distance from the edge. Now you can secure the pattern pieces in place with pins and then cut out the fabric along the outlines. Anytime you see a little notch like this, cut a short snip and by short I mean about five millimeters or quarter of an inch. These notches will help you to piece the fabric together later. If you're adding the drawstring, mark the drawstring openings on the right side, that's the nice side, of both front legs. Now I like to use dressmaker's carbon and a tracing wheel for this, but if you don't have these, you can just use chalk pencil or a washable pen instead. You should have cut two front legs, two back legs and two drawstrings if you're adding that part. Now a little tip, you can attach safety pins to the back legs so you can quickly tell them apart from the front legs and if you've already lost track of which are which, the back legs have longer crotch seams with double notches. Now lay the back legs over the front legs so the right sides are facing each other. Now if your fabric doesn't have an obvious right and wrong side, just make sure that your legs look symmetrical so you end up with one left leg and one right leg. Pin them together along the inside legs and the side seams, matching up the top corners and the notches. Now don't worry that the pieces don't lie flat, they're not meant to because the back legs need extra space for your curves. Just match them up at the raw edges. And now you can start sewing. So stitch together the seams that you've just pinned. Now this pattern includes a 15mm or 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, so keep the raw edges lined up with the 15 or 5 8 guideline on the top of your sewing machine. Back tack or reverse stitch for a couple of stitches at each end to secure the stitches in place and remove the pins as you go. Trim the loose threads and then trim the seam allowances to about half their width. Finish the seam allowances to stop them fraying. If you have an overlocker or a serger, go ahead and use that. Otherwise, you can sew zigzag stitches along the edges using your regular sewing machine. And if you need some help with this, search zigzag finishing on tillyandthebuttons.com. Alternatively, you can use pinking shears. Now use a steam iron to press the seam allowances towards the back leg. Now start by pressing the wrong side or the inside of the legs, and then the right side or the nice side pulling the fabric away from the seam as you go to get rid of any ridges. And now we can join the two legs together. Turn one leg wrong side out and one leg right side out. 
slip the leg which is right side out inside the other leg so the right sides are facing each other. Line up the top of the inside legs so the seams are exactly on top of one another and pin them together at the top. Now you can pin the legs together along the rest of this curved crotch seam, matching up the top corners and the notches. Stitch along this pinned curve, again using a 15mm or 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now make sure you're only sewing together two layers here, not four. Top tip, you can sew an extra line of stitches along the middle of the crotch curve to reinforce it and avoid any awkward wardrobe malfunctions. Trim and finish the seam allowances like you did before. Pull the legs out and press the seam allowances to one side. If you're not adding the drawstring, skip ahead to the next section called Make the Waist Channel. If you are making the drawstring, cut two small rectangles of iron-on interfacing, about 2cm by 3cm or 3 quarters of an inch by 1 and a quarter inches. Find the drawstring opening markings on the front legs and place the interfacing pieces glue side or rough side down underneath them on the wrong side of the fabric. Press them in place with a hot dry iron. Stitch a buttonhole on each drawstring opening marking, making the buttonhole 12 to 15 millimetres long or half an inch to 5 eighths of an inch long. Now if you need help sewing buttonholes, we have videos on our YouTube channel which will take you step by step through this bit. If you have a sealant like Freycheck, use it now, then let it dry. Carefully open up the buttonholes with a buttonhole chisel or a seam ripper. Now be really careful that you don't accidentally rip through the side of the buttonhole. And we're really getting there now. Now we can make the waist channel for the elastic and or drawstring. With the pyjamas right side out, fold the top edge under 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side and press the fold. Then you can fold it under another 35 millimetres or 1 and 3 eighths inches, press again and pin in place. Measure an opening of around 10 centimetres or 4 inches at the back and mark either end of this opening with a pair of pins and then you can remove any pins in between. We're going to leave this part unstitched so we can thread the elastic through in a bit. Line up the fold with a 30mm or 1 and 1 8 inch seam allowance guide on your sewing machine. Sew around the waist channel, leaving this opening unstitched, back tacking or reverse stitching at each end. Now if you're leaving out the elastic, you're going to sew all the way around the waist without leaving any opening unstitched. Now to add the elastic. Measure your low waist, which is about 5-7cm to seven centimeters or 2 or 3 inches below your navel. Take off 10% for stretch and add 1.5cm or 5 eighths of an inch for an overlap. For example, if your low waist is 90cm, your elastic will be 90 minus 9 plus 1.5 equals 82.5cm. Cut the elastic to this length and attach a large safety pin to each end. Use one of the safety pins to secure the elastic to the inside of the pyjamas near one end of the waist channel opening. Use the other safety pin to thread the elastic all the way around the waist channel. Once it emerges at the other end, feel around the channel to check the elastic isn't twisted. Remove the safety pins and pin the ends of the elastic together, overlapping them by 15mm or 5 8 of an inch. Now you can try your pyjamas on and check you're happy with the fit of the elastic, adjusting it if you need to. Pull the elastic out of the way of the fabric and then stitch the ends together with a couple of lines of stitches, back tacking securely. Pin the unstitched lower fold of the opening to the inside of the legs. Sew the opening closed with a 30mm or 1 and 1 8 inch seam allowance, so in line with the rest of the waist channel stitching. Make sure the elastic is out of the way of the stitching. Again, you can skip to the next part if you're not making the drawstring. If you are adding it, lay the drawstring pieces right sides together at one short end and pin them together. And stitch. 
Top tip for you, sewing machines love to chew up narrow pieces of fabric like this when you start on the edge. So to stop this happening, start sewing a little way in from the edge, then turn the piece over and sew back over the gap. Trim the seam allowances and press them open. Now press the two short ends of the drawstring under by about 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side and this measurement doesn't have to be exact. Now press the drawstring in half lengthways with the wrong sides on the inside. Open this fold out and fold each long raw edge in to meet this centre fold and press again. Now you can refold the drawstring in half lengthways so it's enclosing the raw edges and give it another press. Now pin in place along the length of the drawstring. Stitch along the drawstring close to the open edges. Again, don't start right at the end here. Start a little way in and sew back over the gap at the end so your sewing machine doesn't chew up the piece. Attach a safety pin to one end of the drawstring and thread it through one of the buttonholes, around the waistline and out the other buttonhole. Remove the safety pin and tie a knot in each end. And we've nearly finished! Try your pyjamas on and check you're happy with the length. Bear in mind they're going to be 2.5cm or 1 inch shorter once hemmed. If you want to shorten them, you can trim them down now. Fold and press the leg hems under 10mm or 3 eighths of an inch to the wrong side. Fold them under another 15mm or 5 eighths of an inch, press again and pin in place. Stitch the hems in place 10mm or 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge. I like to sew with the pyjamas right sides out and the wrong side up on my sewing machine, so I'm sewing inside the loop of the leg. Overlap the last few stitches over the first few stitches to secure them in place, or if you think your stitches are going to miss, you can always just back tack at each end. Give your pyjamas a final press and do a happy dance. You have made your own pyjama bottoms. We would love to see your Jamie pyjamas, so please do share pictures with us on Instagram at Tilly Buttons using the hashtag Sewing Jamie, that's Jamie with two eyes, so that we can see them. And if you want to sew more things with us, then subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can find our books, patterns and online workshops at shop.tillyandthebuttons.com. Happy sewing! <laughs>